education system. I'm not coming of age, I've just had a bout of the cold. As always, I'm thankful for the opportunity to stand before you. I consider it a great honor to do so. This morning, I would like for us to consider a question about prayer and then give a Bible answer about it. The question is, does God hear the alien sinner's prayer? Now, just what do we mean about alien sinner? Well, this term specifically is anyone who has never obeyed the gospel of Christ. Paul pointed it out in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, that at the time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were afar off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. So an alien sinner is the one who has never become a child of God. Now we would point out that God is their creator, God is their maker. However, he is not their spiritual father. So then, does God hear their prayers? What do the, te the scriptures teach regarding this subject? First, we would like to point out that prayer, the very avenue of prayer, is a spiritual blessing. We see under the law of Moses that only the priests could offer incense, the sacrifice of incense. Exodus chapter 30, verses 1 and 7. Numbers chapter 18, verses 1 through 7. And Hebrews chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. We know from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 5 through 9, or excuse me, 5 and 9, that under the law of Christ, each Christian is a priest. Ye also, as lightly stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should sow forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Again, that's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 and 9. As priests, Christians are to offer sacrifices. Our very lives are meant to be living sacrifices. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. As priests, we should offer the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. These are privileges offered to Christians and Christians only. Now putting these two together, we must note that the Old Testament incense was or is a type of prayer offered by saints. Psalm 141 verses 1 and 2 states, Lord, I cry unto thee, Make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice. When I cry unto thee, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice, as well as Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. When he had taken the book, the four living creatures, the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having each one a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. That rendering comes from the American Standard Version 1901. King James there points out the bowl full of odors. But the idea there still translates. 
the prayers of the saints are as incense before God. Thus, the offering of incense today is spiritual in nature. Prayer is the offering of spiritual incense. Only priests can offer this sacrifice. In order to be a priest, one must be acceptable to God by Christ. This is only accomplished by being in Christ. Being in Christ allows access to not some spiritual blessings, but every spiritual blessing. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. You see, if God hears the prayer of the alien sinner, prayer ceases to be a spiritual blessing. How does one gain access to these blessings? We typically refer to that as the plan of salvation. An alien sinner has the op opportunity to hear God's word, Romans 10, 17, to believe in the deity of Christ, John 8, 24, to repent of his or her past sins, Acts 3, 19, to confess Christ before others, Romans chapter 9, or 10, verses 9 and 10, and then to be baptized into Christ, Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, and Acts chapter 22, verse 16, as well as Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Only, only at this point, does that one cease to be an alien sinner? This individual has now entered into the royal realm, a royal priest. And this individual is now able to have their prayers heard by God Almighty. Secondly, we wish to consider what the Old Testament has to say about prayer. We can see what the Old Testament says regarding sin and prayer and the relationship thereof. First, we point out that alien sinners are not righteous people. Oftentimes, others might refer to so-and-so down the street as a good person. Well, most of the time, we mean, maybe morally speaking, they're decent. They don't engage as, or in most things that others might. But fundamentally, they're not good people. God has defined what good means. And if we're using that in an incorrect way, we're giving too much credit where it is not due. Alien sinners are not righteous people. The alien sinner does evil things. They are aliens from the commonwealth, as we have pointed out earlier. But also in Psalm chapter, 34 verses 15 and 16. There David pins, The eyes of Jehovah are toward the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of Jehovah is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The alien sinner allows wrongdoing to reign in his or her life. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard or approve of iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. This is what keeps an alien sinner an alien sinner. The will to keep iniquity in their heart. Because of this, the alien sinner is considered wicked before God, their creator. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayers of the righteous. You see a contrast here. He hears the prayers of the righteous, but he's far from the wicked. The alien sinner chooses to not even hear the law. They choose not to heed the conditions of salvation. As a result, they remain alienated from their creator. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. You see, people offer prayers all the time. But the 
question is whether or not they're heard by their maker. God considers the alien sinner's prayer an abomination. Let us consider the words of the prophet Isaiah to Judah in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. Have ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. You see, the alien sinner chooses to be in rebellion to God. But it doesn't have to remain that way. Unfortunately, all too often it does by their own choice. We must always put fault where it belongs. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 through 4. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. If I didn't know any better, I, I would think Isaiah is speaking of America today, the world at large. But we know from these verses, God is able to save. God is willing to save. However, we as free moral agents depart from God. And as a result, we have no right to speak to him via prayer. What does the New Testament say regarding prayer with respect to the alien sinner? What can we find in the New Testament? You see, Peter outlined Christian conduct in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. He gives a thing or a list of things that the Christian ought to do. He also gives a list of things Christians ought not do. Then he gives then he gives a reason why to them. There in verse 12, 1 Peter chapter 3. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You see, if you wish to have this benefit of prayer, you're going to abstain from these this list of evil, and you're going to do the works of righteousness. Peter there outlines it in chapter 3 of the first epistle that he wrote. Now, over whom are the eyes of the Lord? We just read it. The ears of God are open or in tune, or in tune to whose prayers? The only answer to these two questions is the righteous, the righteous person. Alien sinner is not and will never be synonymous with righteous person. Next we consider the blind man who was healed in John chapter 9. This former blind man, upon receiving his, fight, his sight, Proclaimed in refuting some error from the, the Pharisees of his day in verses 31 through 33 of that chapter. Now we know 
that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Now he was certainly thankful for Jesus opening his eyes. And he proclaimed some basic truths. We would point out that these words were not uttered by an inspired man. However, the argument that he presented went unchallenged by the Pharisees he refuted. He proclaimed before those there, we know that God heareth not sinners. We know that. Thus, he had to have been taught that during his time on the earth. Who do you think taught him? Where do you think they learned it? The law of Moses. He echoes the concepts that we read about moments ago from the Old Testament. Thus, the prayers of the alien sinners go unheeded by their Creator. Now we wish to consider some questions that need answers regarding our subject at hand. I know I've seen this a few times, when, specifically when we gather for a meal at work or other places. Have you ever thought about how the alien sinner addresses God and what they would call prayer? Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to say, Our Father which art in heaven. The alien sinner is not yet a child of God. Thus, the alien sinner has no scriptural authority to address God in such a way. Can the alien sinner rightly repeat the words of Psalm 8, verses 1 and 8? Lord, O oh Lord? Absolutely not. You see, the alien sinner has not yet made Christ his Lord nor his King. In whose name would an alien sinner pray to begin with? They can't scripturally address God as their Father or Lord. In whose name would they pray? Can the alien sinner rightfully claim to approach God through Christ, the great mediator and intercessor? Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Well, who's the them? The them must be those who have come unto God by Jesus Christ. The alien sinner has not done so. Therefore, Jesus Christ. Christ, our mediator, does not mediate for alien sinners, nor does he intercede for them. How can the one who has rejected the Savior of the world and his gospel have the same access to the same benefits as those who have indeed obeyed that same saving gospel? 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 6 shows us that we have an advocate with the Father. The little children mentioned there are Christians, Christian converts, not gospel rebels. The alien sinner does indeed have a spiritual father. We must keep this in mind. They do have a spiritual father. We find out exactly who that father is in John 8, 44. Romans chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, as well as 1 John chapter 3, verse 10, which reads, In this the children of God are manifest, 
and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Well, there's only two options. If you do evil, are you God's child? Absolutely not. Of necessity, you are child of the devil. The spiritual father of the alien sinner is Satan himself. Do you think Satan has the same benefits as the Christian does? Finally, we will consider some possible objections to this concept. You know how folks are that like to find exceptions with rules and make those exceptions the rule. First, we have the conversion account of Saul of Tarsus. We find him praying after meeting the Lord in that vision, being struck with blindness. We find him praying, and then ultimately he was saved. So his salvation must have been brought about by his act of praying, right? It is indeed true that Saul prayed after seeing the Lord. Christ even told Ananias that Saul was praying, Acts chapter 9, verse 11. You'll find Saul of Tarsus there praying. In fact, he did. Do you find where Saul of Tarsus was commanded to pray after seeing the Lord? There is no such command in either of the, conver in the conversion accounts. You think if there were, that would have been recorded. Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 22, and Acts chapter 26. You see, Saul of Tarsus prayed due to his own reasoning. Perhaps it was because that's the only thing he thought he could do. Ananias gave Saul of Tarsus the only remedy to save his sin-sick condition, to save him from his sin-sick condition. And we find that in Acts chapter 22, verse 16. And now, why tarriest thou? In effect, stop praying and do something about it. Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You want to pray? That's well and good, but right now your sins are going unheeded by God. This is how you call on the name of the Lord. Only at this point was Saul saved. Only at this point did Saul of Tarsus gain access to the great spiritual blessing that is prayer. The second attempt at an exception would be Cornelius. We know that Cornelius prayed to God always and was ultimately saved. Acts chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Again, was his prayer sufficient to save him? We know in verse 2 of Acts 10 that Cornelius is depicted as being a devout man. This term means well reverent, pious, or godly. He was a Gentile. So how was he devout? How was he reverent? How was he godly? Well, obviously he was faithfully worshiping God under the law of patriarchy. Thus Cornelius, at this point in time, could not be correctly labeled as an alien sinner. While this is true, he lived in a transition period in history. While he was in fellowship with God through the law of patriarchy, both the law of patriarchy and the law of Moses were done away with, and they ceased to have authority on this earth. Thus, Cornelius had but two options. He could become an alien sinner by continuing to worship God under patriarchy, or he could remain a devout and honest man. His prayers were not able to bring him into a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. 
there was but one thing that could save Cornelius. Acts chapter 11 verse 14. That would be the saving words of the gospel. Upon hearing these words, baptism followed. Acts chapter 10 verses 47 and 48. You see in both of these supposed objections, prayer was not a term of salvation. Only hearing and obeying the gospel of Christ led to their salvation. Thus, they're not exceptions. They fall as gears in sync. They work just right with the answer to the question we originally asked. Does God hear the alien sinner's prayer? The scriptures teach that no, he does not. This last Wednesday night, we heard a great sermon over thankfulness. And as many of us have probably observed the day of Thanksgiving that we had this last Wednesday, or Thursday rather. Think about how many prayers were offered on that day. Prayers of Thanksgiving. Legitimately thanking God for the blessings that they had received. Now, of that great multitude, how many of them had their prayers heard by God? Now, carry that to every other day of this life. People pray for thanks. People pray for things. A whole host of things people pray for. And they might be good in and of themselves. If they're alien sinners, did God hear their prayer? Absolutely not. This is indeed a sad condition to be in. And unfortunately, most of the world offers prayers that go unheeded by their Creator. But as we've pointed out, prayer is not the key to salvation. As we have studied, only the Christian the pure child of God has the great privilege of offering a prayer to his or her God with the expectation of it being heard and answered. It might be no, it might be yes, it might even be a not yet. But our Heavenly Father hears our prayers. The same cannot be said about the alien sinner. Though God is the creator of all, he is only father to those who have obeyed his will. Now this morning, if this great blessing appeals to you, why not become a Christian? We have listed the things that you must do in order to become a child of God, a Christian. And at that point, you are eligible, you are authorized to offer prayers. And your Heavenly Father will hear them, and He will answer them. We have discussed the necessary steps to become a Christian. Why not take them? You think of, <clears throat> you think of Matthew chapter 7 and the picture it paints. How people did good things, but Jesus says, depart from me. That sums up most of the world. Now, as a child of God, have you lost the right to prayer through submitting to sin once more? We've also pointed out the remedy to this condition. We have an advocate with the Father. Confession and prayer. The blood of Christ contacts you again to remove your sin. Whatever state you might be in, whether an alien sinner or an erring child of God, please make your confession known. Whatever help you need come forward and we'll pray with you we'll get you the help you need based on the scriptures as together we stand and sing <laughs>